Hey everybody, thanks for being here. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil. First of all, let me say Happy New Year to all of you. And I hope 2023 is a great year for all of you here. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Today we are going to talk about electric bikes and some of the issues, challenges, uh, specs on the ones that are available here in the U.S. And uh, so let's do this. Let's get started. I am out for a beautiful winter ride. We have uh, warm temperatures today here in central Pennsylvania uh, in the mid 50s. So I'm out riding with a buddy of mine and we are going to talk about electric bikes while we are out and about. So there's a lot of discussion going on with electric bikes and it is a big, big deal in our world right now. Uh, we certainly have uh, a lot of issues to think through when it comes to electric bikes. Um, there are of course a lot of pros to electric bikes or electric vehicles. Uh, we have the reduction in in the carbon footprint and and you know exhaust fumes, things like that that are adding to pollution, those kinds of things, reducing our dependency on oil. And has been those kinds of factors that have led to an absolutely enormous rise and increase in sales of electric vehicles over the past couple of years. But there are certainly some issues that, that come with this kind of thing as well. One is the recycling of the batteries. Uh, we here in the U.S., as far as I know, don't have any recycling centers available yet in, in as far as being able to properly dispose of the batteries. These batteries have toxic metals in them when it comes to just letting them sit in a landfill. They can't be disposed of by just putting them in a landfill they, uh, and we don't have proper recycling centers really available for especially ones as big as in the you know cars, things like Teslas, things like that. Um, where There are also a lot of concerns when it comes to the mining of the metals for these batteries, the lithium and the cobalt in particular. A lot of the lithium is coming from Chile and a lot of the cobalt uh, is coming from, certainly some of the cobalt is coming from the U.S. and recycling of metals already, but some of that cobalt is coming from Africa, Congo as well, and there are both with Chile and Congo there are certainly a lot of cons humanitarian concerns with uh, child labor or underpaid labor or things like that. And uh, as far as as far as uh, mining and refining those metals for all the lithium batteries that we are using and putting out around the world today. The when it comes to motorcycles, it's a whole different ball game because one of the biggest problems we have with bikes is that they haven't developed the power sources enough to be able to give us anything close to the runtime that we have with current motorcycles. So most of our of the electric motorcycles that are out there right now, uh, when you talk about highway speeds, they have anywhere from 40 to 100, 120, 130 uh, maximum range, mile range on the highway and then they the bikes have to be charged for a while. Having, you know, 50, 60, 80, 100 mile range max before you have to stop and charge the bike just really does not fit well with a lot of what we're doing with our bikes these days. Fits fine if you're just using your bike around town, if you're commuting with it, if you're using it as the goal of your of having the motorcycle is to reduce your emissions, to reduce your fuel costs. If that is the reason you have a motorcycle, then sure it makes sense. But if you have a motorcycle for entertainment purposes, for uh, just getting out and riding for you know on a weekend or, or whatever when the weather's nice and you want to just get out and ride for a few hours 
then electric motorcycles just aren't there yet. So please leave a comment below what you think. Uh, feel free to to discuss this in the comments politely, please, because I know this is a bit of a heated issue right now. But right now we're going to talk about the four biggest electric motorbikes that uh, companies that are available in the U.S. right now and talk about the specs, at least the specs that I can find and prices and whatnot. Uh, ones that I did not cover uh, because they were either more like electric bicycles or because they are primarily European based companies and I did not find dollar prices on them, meaning that if you want to buy one, you I think you have to pay in euros and have it shipped over to the States. I don't know that they're directly available in the States. Uh, uh, companies like Tromox, Ox, Arc Vector is available in the States, but it is a high, very high end, uh, starts at over $120,000. Uh, so it's up in there comparable with Keanu Reeves' Arch motorbike. Uh, so it's not really in the 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 spectrum, the demographic of, of what I've been talking about here. Uh, Maven is another one uh, that's, I think, Chinese or something like that, and uh, not really available, readily available in the states. So we won't going to be, we aren't going to be talking about those. We're just going to be talking about four manufacturers that I did find that are available in the states. And we are going to start with the Rivid, Rivid, I don't know how to pronounce it, R-Y-V-I-D uh, company. They have one bike. It is the Rivid Anthem. And it has a uh, max speed of about 75 miles per hour, about a 75 miles range on it. Um, it is a 30 to 34 inch adjustable seat height. It has a 4.3 kilowatt hour removable battery, makes it easier for charging. Uh, 53 foot pounds of torque, 18 horsepower. It is a 240 pound bike. And uh, it is actually not available yet. This is brand new. And it is, if you pre-order now, you can get the, the kind of the grand opening version of the bike. Uh, for 7800 this summer otherwise if you want the just standard version of the bike I think it's later on in the year that'll be available as well the next bike that we have uh, is the Energica Energica it's an Italian brand they have four different models the and so being an Italian brand of course it's a little more expensive uh, but it has some some half decent specs on it. So the uh, the lowest model is the SS9 plus and Incidentally all of the Energicas have a 130 to 260 mile range So that's 130 highway to 260 city mile range and and anything in between there in terms of a mixture of combination of highway city riding um, so anyway, that's, that's the range. They listed all bikes as 573 pounds. I'm not sure that that's accurate. That seems off for the variety of the different models they have that they all weigh the same weight. So I'm not quite sure that that's right. I'm wondering if that's more the, the riding capacity, um, or something to that effect. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, so the SS9 Plus is uh, has 153 foot-pounds of torque and 107 horsepower has 125 mile per hour max speed uses a 21.5 kilowatt hour uh, max is the maximum output on the motor on the electric motor it has a 31.1 inch seat height and it starts at 22,850. It has an RS version, which basically has a higher, slightly higher acceleration. So these bikes are really fast. They are, and this is common for electric bikes as well. Electric bikes generally have an extremely high acceleration rate because 
you have that direct line from the the batteries to the back wheel and so the uh, they accelerate really quickly most of them are somewhere in the 0 to 60 are somewhere in the realm of anywhere from uh, I've seen all the way down to 2.6 to about three and a half seconds uh, seems to be the common ranges I've seen on that so they're really fast in terms of acceleration and the RS version of the SS9 Plus uh, gives you a slightly fast I think it's it goes from a 3.1 down to a 2.8 as far as the 0 to 60 seconds on the SS9 Plus for the RS. All right, and that is 23,800 as the starting point. The next we have is Xperia, and again, the same 130 to 260 mile range. This has 85 foot pounds of torque and 80 horsepower, has 112 mile per hour max speed, uh, maximum output of 22.5 kilowatt hours and a 33.3 inch seat height. This is the uh, Sport Touring, I believe. Uh, this starts at 23,750. So I'm ordering these not by style, but by price. And it has no special versions on it. There's no RS version or anything like that. Incidentally, on most of the bikes with the Energica, except for the Xperia, they have a triple color paint scheme, which is a add-on price as well on top of the, the pricing. So I'm showing those, but I'm not uh, including all the different add-on prices or whatever. All right, next we have the Eva Ribelli. It is a same 130 to 260 mile range, 164 foot-pounds of torque, 169 horsepower, 125 mile per hour max speed, Max output of 21.5 kilowatt hours, 31.1 inch seat height, and starts at 23,800. And the RS version is 24,750 for that slightly faster acceleration. And then lastly, the Ego, which is your Super Sport. Uh, same specs, 130 to 260 range, 164 foot-pounds of torque, 169 horsepower, 150 maximum speed, same 21.5 max kilowatt hours, 31.9 inch seat height. This one starts at 25,600 and the RS version is 26,650. So definitely not cheap bikes. All right, we're going to move to the Zero. Zero is fairly common. I think they might be the oldest as far as what's available in the U.S. They have a lot of different models. Uh, some of them are fairly similar. I am going to, again, be ordering these by price. So we start with the FX. I believe it's a Supermoto. It has a 39 to 91 mile range. So 39 highway, 91 city, 78 foot-pounds of torque with 46 horsepower, 85 mile per hour max, 7.2 kilowatt hour output, 34.7 inch seat height, 289 pound weight, and 13,000 for this. The FXE is basically the same, a 40 to 100 mile range. Uh, same 78 foot pounds, 46 horsepower, 85 mile per hour, 7.2 kilowatt output. This has a lower seat at 32.9. This is 298 pounds and 13,000 as well. All right, the Dual Sport, the DS, has, they give us the specs as is, and then they give us the specs with an optional power pack, which gives you increased uh, you know, it, it's like a secondary battery pack basically that you can add on. So, single battery pack, it's 39 to 82 mile range with both with the add on, it's 58 to 122. Uh, same 78 foot pounds of torque, 46 horsepower, 98 mile per hour max speed. It has a 7.2 kilowatt max output on the single battery pack and 10.8 with the add on. 
33.2 inch seat height. It is 317 pounds with the single battery pack and 362 with the add-on is $13,000 with the single battery pack and $15,900 with the add-on battery pack. That is the DS, the dual sport. We have the S, which is a naked bike. Again, has the add-on battery pack, so 45 to 89 for the single, 67 to 134 with the add-on as far as mile range. 78 foot-pounds of torque, 46 horsepower, 98 miles per hour max speed, the 7.2 or 10.8 kilowatt hours, 31.8 inch seat height, 313 pounds or 357 pounds with the add-on, and it is same price, 13,000 or 15,900. We go back to the dual sports, we have the DSR now. It has a 78 to 163 mile range, so definitely an increase, uh, or 97 to 204 mile range with the optional battery pack add-on. 116 foot-pounds of torque, 70 horsepower on this 102 maximum mile per hour speed, 14.4 kilowatt hours or 18 kilowatt hours with the optional add-on pack, 33.2 inch seat height, 419 pounds or 463 pounds and 18,000 standard or 20,900 with the add-on pack. And back to the nakeds we have a SR. This, the rest of the bikes do not have an optional battery pack for them. So the SR has is an 84 to 269 mile range. It's quite the quite the big range between city and highway. 122 foot, put, foot pounds of torque and 74 horsepower. 104 maximum speed. 15.6 kilowatt hour max output. 31 inch seat height. 489 pounds. 20,000. The SR slash F is another naked bike upgraded version 93 to 187 range much smaller range 140 foot pounds of torque and 110 horsepower 124 max speed 17.3 kilowatt hour max output 31 inch seat height 500 pounds even for 23,800 and we now move to a sport bike we have the SR s which is the same 93 to 187 as the naked bike, 140 foot-pounds of torque, 110 horsepower, 124 miles per hour max speed, 17.3 kilowatt max output battery pack, 31 inch seat, 518 pounds, $24,000. And last, we have the Sport Touring, which is 85 to 180 mile range. 166 foot-pounds of torque, 100 horsepower, 112 miles per hour, 17.3 kilowatt hours, 32.6 inch seat, 544 pounds for 24,500. The last of our bikes is the Livewire, which as we know was first started out as a Harley-Davidson and Harley-Davidson then spun it off and they uh, became an independent company. We're gonna actually start off with a new bike, the brand new S2 Del Mar. The S2 Del Mar is actually not available in production yet. So I noticed when I was looking at the Livewire website that all the pictures said they are pre-production pictures. The actual product may look different than the pictures. The bike itself looks like it is in pre-order status. Um, there's not a whole lot of specs on it. It's rated to have up to a 110 mile range that's in the city. Uh, I do not have any specs on the highway range. It is, they did tell me it weighs 431 pounds. Uh, I don't have anything on the max speed. I don't have anything on the torque. I don't have anything on the kilowatt hour output, the seat height. Uh, I do know that it will start at 17,000. And then the last one, the one that is much more well known as far as the live wire is the live wire one. It has a 70 to 146 mile range, 70 highway, 146 city, 
84 foot-pounds of torque, 100 horsepower. I don't know the max speed on it. It has a 15.4 kilowatt hour max output, a 30 inch seat height, 562 pounds for 22,800 as the starting point, and that is the live wire one. Keep in mind with the specs on these bikes, the speed and the kilowatt hour output are maximum, so they are not sustainable. Like you can't take these bikes that's rated for whatever, 102, let's say, miles per hour and hold that 102 miles per hour for a sustainable period of time. It is a burst of speed. Uh, the same thing with the kilowatt hours. That 17.3 or whatever it is, is a maximum output, but not sustainable output. So the sustainable speed and outputs are lower than that. So as you can see, when you compare these models, when you ta start talking about the price range, like say for instance, right now I can buy a brand new Indian Scout for somewhere in the thirteen dollars to $15,000 range, something like that. If you start looking at that range in the electric bikes, you're talking about the lower end on the zeros is about all there is. And those are gonna give you 40, 50 miles on the highway max and 100 miles max in the city or you know 100 and yeah I mean you're talking 100 120 130 miles max in the city for that kind of price range and I mean I get I get 150 160 miles on one tank of gas on on my scout and you know so when you really start comparing apples to apples the electric bikes really have a long way to go before they are able to reach the capacity for what the gas based uh, ICE engines can do right now and I think that I mean I think that honestly we are headed in the right direction I think that it's good to reduce our carbon footprint I think it's good to become a little bit less dependent on oil uh, for for our transportation. I don't think motorcycles as a, at least here in the US, motorcycles, the motorcycle ICE engine is going anywhere anytime soon. I know there's a ruling out in, in England or the UK right now that come 2035, I think it is, there's not going to be any more production of ICE engines. They're shutting. They're, they're supposed to be shutting them down by 2035. Um, I I don't foresee that happening anytime soon in the U.S. At least I certainly hope not. Until they're able to to get uh, bikes that can go much longer distances before a charge and bring the pricing down to something that is somewhat reasonable. So if I can, you know, buy a bike that will take me, uh, you know, that I can go four or 500 miles in a day and I can get that bike for $15,000, then we're going to start being a little bit more apples to apples in terms of, of what's, of what the IC engines can do. But until then, I just don't think it's really a great option right now. Um, but at least they're starting. At least they're they're working on it. Uh, I know in terms of the the recycling and all that kind of stuff, they are working on those things. There's a, a company that's in the process of building a big recycling uh, lithium battery recycling plant in Nevada, I think, if I read correctly, or something like that. But you know, it's a work in progress. And it's not a bad thing. Uh, we have obviously our environmental concerns versus the practical use or, or what, you know, our, our culture and our society and how we use our motorbikes and, and, and whatnot. And those two are in kind of direct contradiction with each other at this point. Um, so uh, I can see both sides of the fence. But anyway, those are the those are the specs on the main versions of the electric motorbikes that are available here in the US that I could find that are available for on the websites that have US dollars for their pricing 
uh, in terms of being able to actually order one here in the States. So that is it for the electric bikes. Thanks everybody for being here and watching this. I will see you on the next one.